In this video today we're going to talk a little bit about how you get data from a website um, on the technical side. Uh, if you don't have a database connection or an FTP connection and you just want to go out to a normal website like this one here I've got covers.com and I'm going to go under NFL teams and I'm going to pick Detroit because I happen to know what scheme they use um, for their website address. Uh, and what you'll see, it pulled up the Detroit Lions, it's the current season. And over here on the right hand side, it's got the, uh, the win-loss, uh, you know, obviously, they, um, and, and how they did against the line. So they won the first game against the Giants and covered. Uh, the loss, the second game to Carolina, did not cover. And uh, won the third game against Green Bay and covered. And then it's got the rest of the season out here. So basically, you got some stats out here, but they're embedded in a web page. Uh, so you can go page by page and uh, write these down and copy them to uh, an Excel spreadsheet or something. Uh, but when you have a lot of data to do, that's not uh, the optimal way. So, first of all, let me copy this um, web page. Web page address, and I put it up on the screen here. And it's HTTP covers.com page loader. It's got an ASPX with a question mark. And it's got data NFL teams team team one dot HTML. And I happen to know if you change this up here to team two dot HTML, it'll pull up the Atlanta Falcons and so on and so forth. So the scheme that covers is using for the NFL is teams one, two, three, four, up to 32. And um, you can actually get past results the same way. The address will be slightly different. But all I'm going to do is, so I know that I can pull up one of these pages. And so you say, well, what does that mean? Well, every page, if I go under here, under the, you know, hold down the Alt key and get the view source, there'll be the HTML behind it. Um, and so the HTML, uh, you have to learn know a little bit about HTML language. But if I just do a find for regular season because I know that's what it, the header was it'll pop me down here and let me close out that find so way down here on line 1308 it's got regular season uh, I happen to be on team number two rather than team number one so let me how that see how their results were in the regular season uh, first game New Orleans won 37 to 34 covered by covered a line of three so where was I on my view source yeah, here we go. And so what you'll see is here's the headers, date, score, and it's 9-7. And as you go down these lines, um, you'll see it's got a win, 37-34. to 34. It's got a win by 3. And it's actually got the over at 51, so they hit the over. And it'll do the next week and the next week. So uh, within that, there's stuff, you know, like... Uh, um, so this is HTML. And what you can do over in Excel, I've got a normal Excel sheet open here and I'm going to alt F11 which pulls up the code for this worksheet and so I have a form uh, you can go out and get on this on a, a website it's just a user form and it's got code and this is the code that uh, it's actually just a two box code so what I'll do for my uh, code is I'll plug in this HTML this this happened to think just says when the, when the code comes up go get the from text from cell F1 and the two text from to tf2 and then do the command button which is just run this thing which is downloading what it's going to really do uh, the way I've got it set up is I'm going to pull in this first address which is the www covers team x where x is going to go from 1 to 32 and where it's going to dump it is in a file uh, nfl on my c drive and it'll be like team one dot CSV file and so I'll cycle through there when this form comes up and I'll just do that 32 times in my regular uh, form down here so I do have you know basically uh, go get to my other module so go get the weekly coverage go pull the team CSVs pull the scores from them and then take the results and put them over but you can do anything like that so this here you probably can't see that too well, but here's the team. It's going to go from 1 to 32, and it's going to dump it out to, to the C drive. Um, 
So once you have it on the C drive, let me pop over to the C drive to my NFL directory. And I've got all kinds of CSVs in there, but here's the, the Team 2 CSV. And I'll have to go over and show the Excel now. And it's the same thing we saw when we were looking at the HTML and the source code. And eventually you get down to that regular season at row 1032 or whatever. So with a little bit of code, you can go and look here and uh, start to pull out you know, look for the data cell, go, you know, keep cycling line by line, find the word data cell using a find function. And then you can, you know, see the scores and start to trim the strings and uh, that kind of stuff. So it's actually uh, advantageous to do that. So you'll need to know a little bit of um, Visual Basic. And it's not too tough. Once you got these routines down, all I'm doing is stripping out what, you know, look for something in teams in the string, and if there's a buy, and then just put them into other cells. So what I'm doing here is let me drop that CSV because it only pops it open and then closes it, is that all I'm doing is populating the results in this particular one. But when I did data lookups um, from past seasons and stuff, you can put them in, in, on separate lines. And so that kind of automates the task. Um, for you of uh, handwriting all those type of metrics. So you can kind of do the same thing here. I'm kind of zooming in. I've got, this is um, a way that I kind of look at uh, some of the NCAA. I'm not looking at stats here. I'm looking at people in their contest. And I'm going to, the first one up here is Bama Brett. And what I've, I've compiled is, you know, kind of the year by year uh, performance of how he did against the spread in his past year's picks, let me click on this icon here, this link, and that should launch um, where he is on the covers page, and this is, happens to be his home space page. Um, so it, it works kind of the same way. It's spaces, Bama Brett. Uh, I'm going to go into NCAA football for him. I'm going to do a picks history. And what you'll see is that in the 2013-2014, he hasn't picked one yet in the current season, but he was plus 8,100 units is where he ended up at the, for an ATS pick. There's ATS, OU, and all picks. Of course, he wasn't quite as good on the OU, um, but his rank was uh, 1,000 out of 10,000. Uh, but in the 2012 season, he was plus 12,000. In the 2011 season, he's plus 2,000. 2009, he's plus 8,000. So he's got a pretty good history. If you go back to 2008, he was minus 17,000. But the last four years, he's been positive. Um, and when I when I do that on the on the address up here, uh, he's user 59. Uh, usually these are a six-digit number, but I guess they randomly. He's been a member since 2005, so maybe that actually is his number. And it's the same trick I used before with the view source. Once you know this. And you know different users. This happens to be Sport ID 2 is uh, NCAA football. So you can pop out the, the past history. And what I've done by code is the same thing. Drop, dropped him into a CSV. And then I've gone and do the lookups. So I could quickly compile not only him. I mean, it's easy to do that for one person and type the numbers in here. But I've got about 500 users as I'm going down the list. Um, of course, I had them in a different order when I started. I just copied those out of last season's top 500 people. Some of the spaces don't work, but so be it. So then I started to, to say, okay, well, if you got, you know, if you're a positive season and you got three positive seasons, I'll give him three points, actually four, going back to 2009. Uh, and he's played a lot of seasons. I know it has this win percentile. I did so. It's you know, his total has been 30,000 uh, plus 30,000 units over those that time. His average year was 7,600 and his minimum was 2,000. So he's got a high, he's always had a positive minimum. Uh, his median, and then I just plug the criteria, his wins and losses, um, his, his, his um, uh, dollars per bet type thing. And so Bama, Bama Brett is uh, one of those guys that uh, should he come picking again, I'd certainly want to follow him and see what he's doing for his NCAA picks every week. Uh, the next one on the list I am following, it's BWS77, and uh, while he or she uh, has had a negative number, um, the, you know, one of them was in 2011, it was negative 16,000, but uh, good positive years, and actually um, uh, he was the leader 
last year in the regular season for the NCAA. He was number one. That's why I had that number one next to it. But it, as I put my rating scale on there, he's a good person to follow, and he is picking this year. Um, not sure what he's up. His ATS, NCAA football. Of course, he's bad in other sports. But he's uh, currently today, um, he's at 5,500. I think we're about four weeks in. Um, so he's on, you know, so he's a good guy to follow right now. So I, I kind of look at that kind of stuff when I'm making some, some picks. I know he picks every single game, which gets to be a little bit expensive. Uh, but if you can find some people who pick less games um, and, and are currently actively picking, if I do the picks history for him here, um, you'll kind of see he, this year he's plus 5,500. Last year he's plus 23.8. That happened to be the number one uh, ranked uh, regular season. I know that this ranking here has... Um, probably uh, bowl games or something like that and it, uh, he's plus 55 and so he's got a good history minus that one year and a good overall and a good average so um, yeah you can kind of go down the list of the top people who are doing it right now and I can redo this to the 2014 current status but I'd rather do full seasons and see who's picking and uh, yeah hopefully you can latch on to him uh, while he's low when I first identified him this season he was 1300 so yeah he's been winning some money for me. Um, of course, you go out and bet real bets on these people because um, on uh, covers uh, they have to show. Let me see if I got his pending picks. Yes, I do. Oh, sign in. And yeah, so he's got Old Dominion tonight, Fresno State. Uh, of course, he's got a lot of bets, so so you just you know gonna you'll be betting a lot with him. Um, but like I said, he's a, he's a good picker. Uh, it's a way to latch on to somebody without having to do the data. Um, got another example out here. Uh, this one, you can do the same thing with players, and I've loaded all the quarterbacks in there because the players will have a title if I go to an individual players page on covers. Um, usually it's just the active players. So I've got all the active quarterbacks out here, and here I've got their career stats. Uh, you can see this on my www.ats101.com page the main page there way at the bottom or not way at the bottom but in the middle every like every few weeks I'll I'll rerun these numbers for what the historical uh, um, lifetime career uh, ratings of these uh, quarterbacks have been obviously you know the best quarterbacks go to the playoffs and the best quarterbacks this is off the passer rating which is a pretty good stat and you know it's been around for a long long time I know people try to improve on it and do the ESPN stats but basically if you ever run up against you know a, a top Russell Wilson, you know, who's third right now in active lifetime um, passer rating. Of course, Aaron Rodgers is number one. Peyton Manning, you know, you know these guys, and you got somebody, a good quarterback against a bad quarterback. Um, I know that's pretty obvious, uh, but a lot of people don't take that into account, That uh, just how bad, when, when you get the stats in front of you, I know people can be running really good this year. I guess I could look at this year, but I just look at their overall records. Of course, there's a couple of rookies in there that, you know, you have to take a look at. But it, it's the same way. I'm pulling data where I'm coming, you know, I'm dropping uh, this player number with an HTML. The last one on the list must be player 80625.html, and I dump it to a, a player CSV, and then I just dump the data back in, and all I do is, you know, basically uh, run a couple, push a button, run a couple macros, and it will go dump every, all this, I think there's about 80 quarterbacks in the league or so, and um, will extract all that data for me. So back in the... Um, Back in the covers under the NFL, I'm on team number one again, Detroit. I've gone to past results, and you can see you can pretty much go back to 1985. And it's got the week-by-week -week win-loss. Um, and so using the same method, I pulled that over. Here's the 1985 uh, Detroit Lions, and it just goes on. That's where I've, I think I've showed this in another video. I've got since 1985 and beyond. And what the line was, I think if you go out here to player stats, um, I'm not sure where this one comes from exactly. I know you can go in past years and get those type of things. This must be the current year uh, player statistics. Um, so, again, you can go back and get player stats. And I've got, you know, uh, let's see, 14,009 is the last line. So this is the up to, to last year's uh, results. So it's 1985. And that's where I the, do I, I do the majority of work off-season to say, okay, you know where is uh, where have people been? What have they been at? What are the you know what are the uh, 
what's their ATS uh, ranking, what's their real world you know, win loss rating, um, you know, how are they win, what does the public think of them, and you can start to see trends that way. So again, I pulled in a large data set. This is, you know, 30 years times one team times 32 teams. Of course, back then in 1985, I think there was only 28 teams or something like that. But again, this is how you use data. This is how you pull data um, using that. It's just the base, same basic thing. I've got the bound in F1. I've got that uh, address and uh, I dump it to a CSV and then start reading the CSV. So here's some more of the technicality of the code. Um, this one is going back to the NCAA football poll that I had. So I'm doing 500 rows here and it loads the profile with the user and the user is a variable uh, based upon what my cell B. In this case the first one up is Bama Brett uh, and Spore to type is 2 which is the NCAA football. So it puts that string into F1, it copies to it to just a temp file and it does the user form show which pulls it over to my hard drive, from downloads it from the, the web. And then I usually use a, a dimensional array, and I got a load and split where it just loads that dimensional array, and now I've got a, you know just a an array of, of each line, and I'll just start cycling through that line until I find the word season. Again, just to remind ourselves, this is what his is uh, this particular page that it pulls up in CSV form, in regular form. So you see the word season out there, and then I can pull what it's 2013, 2014. I know the next line after that will be the uh, um, uh, ATS line. So I'll just do, you know, find, keep cycling till it hits, uh, finds the word season. And then if it does find the word season, then I'll go ahead and get the, uh, the next line, which actually it's two lines, I guess, after. And the thing is, is the ATS line. And I'll look for that slash TD in the code. And I'll just do another, uh, I'll do a laugh, do another look, do another laugh, and then. Eventually, by trimming uh, the string, I'll get down to the features that I want, which is, um, it'll be the plus 8100 he was for 2013. So I'll put 2013, I'll look that up, it's column J for me, and then I'll put 8100 into it, and yeah, that's where if the season equals 2013, put that in the 10th, uh, J is, is, is column 10. So go ahead and put that K, which is K is basically their end result, plus and minus their profit or loss for the year. And keep cycling, you know, go through every season he has, uh, at least down to 2009. Um, and then go to the next user and do it, and go to the next user and do it, and you're able to pull a large set of data without having a database, without being able to hack their database. Um, now, like I said, then I manually went on and, and figured the code, but if you wanted to automate it after that, you could. So it's not a, a very long piece of code here um, on how to do that but again you need that that user form uh, that comes out of uh, you know a class that uh, again same user form and a command button and it just picks it off your spreadsheet so once you have all that data I, I'm back on the NFL example here I've run a simple test and uh, this test is going to say hey are you are you a home team that's favored by seven or more uh, since 1985, what is the have you have you won or lost that against the spread? And so all I'm doing here is is on, uh, I'm looking at uh, column four, which is tells me I'm home away. We're going to column eight, what the line was, and I'll blank out the two cells, which are my bet cell and my return cell. And if you're home and you've got a minus seven or, or better, minus seven or better, so minus eight, minus nine, you're favored by seven or more. Then you're going to put down a bet of 1.1, and if you win, you'll get back 2.1. So that's just 110 odds. Uh, and if you don't, if it's not a W, it's a zero. I know it's a little conservative because if you pushed. Uh, but anyways, it'll just go through the 14,000 rows, and it will do that. And I've, I've run that. I've got some other calculations going, so I just uh, cut it out because it took about uh, three minutes or so. But you can see down here, and I just quickly, I'm looking at the test. And this one I happened to lose. It was San Diego favored by eight at home against Philadelphia. This is back in 1985. And uh, a couple games later, they were favored by ten. And uh, they won against Buffalo at home. So, yeah, once I've done that, let me refresh the... Uh, this is just a pivot, pivot table that combines all the results. 
and you say, all right, so how would you do? And here's the year by year breakdown, how you would do. But basically I'll add up the 20, 30 years and you'll see that the average year I would have lost money. Um, the best year I won $11. The worst year was minus 21. Um, max out of pocket, you know, that type of stuff. So basically it was a losing strategy to pick uh, home teams and uh, um, by seven or more. Um, so if you didn't know that before, you know it now, but this is a way that you can go through and create simple test routines and people tell you stuff, right? And so you go out and you look, you look in the real world and usually it's not something some simple like that usually loses. I can't just say, hey, bet, you know, hey, what happens if you were, you know, a seven point underdog, you know, how would you do? And instead of being <coughs> minus six a year or something, you'd end up being, you know, minus two or something. But, you know, it's, it's you can go out and run these strategies and have real world data sets and, so when you, you watch some of these uh, Las Vegas pros or something and they start coming up with the last four years and I say, well, how about the last 30 years? And it's like, well, that, that wasn't a, you know, that, that rationale was crap, right? You know, uh, forget, high, high, forget high favorites at home. And, and it's, it's by itself, it's not, not enough. Um, so that's how uh, a quick test that you can do once you have that data and once you have these spreadsheets set up, why it's important to pull data.